hello everyone welcome to my new video and uh, this is on a different topic apart from what we have been discussing so now um, so today we'll be talking about the UiPath insights uh, so this is a platform that is offered by UiPath at the measuring stage towards the end of the uh, UiPath life cycle that we have seen in the RPA journey. So what is the use of insights and why we have it? So, to give you a brief idea, we have been developing a lot of uh, automation solutions to your organizations and to different uh, companies or within the organization itself. But when you have multiple automation solutions running for you you need to make sure that it is running in the proper state so for example you need to make sure the return on investment uh, so basically what how many number of hours you are saving by automating the process and uh, and on the other side was the robot utilization so for example let's say you have 10 or 20 different processors and you want to make sure uh, basically you want to see what's the utilization of the robot uh, and how much time each process is taking and if certain process is failing at a certain uh, instance you need to see why it is failing and for what is the error and how many times that error is occurring in each execution and likewise so you can do a lot of analytics on this so to give get a better understanding about the automation solutions you have we can use UiPath insights to actually see what is going on and uh, how the robots are performing so that is what we are going to look at today and in High level we'll see what inside is and what are its capabilities so let's have a look at some information before actually getting into the insights so over here uh, so this is the UiPath cloud insights um, academy tutorial that we have here so I just uh, I'm just focusing on a few key things like uh, why UiPath Insights and what the benefit of using it. So UiPath Insights will actually help you to measure your RPA development, like track and measure the robot utilization, performance, accuracy, and uh, visualize the process level automation trends and so on. So you can do a lot of things. And also by looking at such kind of information, you can also see what you can do to optimize your RPA processes, the existing process, and uh, see if there are any errors, how you can improve it, how you can get rid of those errors, and if a certain process is taking so much time, you can analyze what is actually causing it to run for so, so long, and maybe try to improve it. Um, and also by looking at this kind of insights you can also uh, help scale your RPA implementation so there are many things and uh, we'll slowly go into the key features of insights so in here in insights you can actually create dynamic dashboards um, UiPath is also providing certain templates that you can use um, and apart from that you can also build your own dashboards you can create your own calculations to generate the required data and the reports that we generate you can easily share between uh, the users also the nice feature we have here is the smart alerts so in case of anything uh, you can actually trigger an alert uh, and send an email to the required users if something critical is happening like for example um, if a certain process is actually causing 
so many errors and uh, let's say for example the maximum number of errors is five and if certain process is reaching or going beyond that limit you can trigger an alert to alert the specific user saying hey you have a process that is causing so many errors just have a look sort of um, and apart from that you can also define different kpis uh, to measure your roi to see how much time and money that you are saving the good thing is this is also available as on-premise and also as a part of the cloud automation platform so that's a very brief introduction about uh, the UiPath Insights and its its key features. So this Insights is actually used by different people. Um, so if we have a look at here, uh, this mainly used by COE leads, the RPA administrators, analysts, and uh, the business owners basically, because they need to have their own uh, measures and they need to see what's actually happening and how they're making progress uh, in in the current automation solutions they're building okay so that being said let's quickly have a look at the UiPath insights and um, see what kind of things we have there and how we can use it so this UiPath Insights is actually uh, not available in the community version. If you enable the trial, you can actually access the insights for the for the trial period. Um, so just to give you an idea, uh, once you go into the home and sorry admin, and in here, if you go to tenant settings, you can enable insights from here just like any other uh, tool that we have within the cloud platform. So once you enable it, you will see the insights uh, over here on the left-hand side panel. So let's go to insights. So you can see this is the dashboard and uh, we have three tabs over here. My dashboards, standard and your path templates. So in my dashboards, we have whatever the dashboards that I have created um, uh, for my use, basically. Under tenant, we will see the reports or the dashboards that people, different users have created and shared. So those things will be uh, shown here. And in UiPath templates, this is where you can find the templates given to you by UiPath. So the good thing about this is you can easily get a copy of these templates. You can either use it as it is or you can do the modifications you need. You can add different items to the dashboard. You can change the existing things and create your own visualization about the uh, about each and everything that you see over here. So by default we have four uh, templates given to us. One is the business ROI that that actually helps us to see uh, the return on investment um, of the existing processes. And the processes, uh, we will see how the processes are monitored and their statistics. So we'll go into detail in a while. And on the queues, this is mainly related to queues and this is about the robots, the robot utilization and so on. So before getting into the details of this, let's quickly have a look at the additional uh, stuff that we have over here. So on the top right corner, you see three dots. The, the dashboard page is what we are actually looking at. And uh, the important one is the manage access. Once you get in here, um, so you can see, this is my user as of now. But we also have different roles, just like we have different roles in the cloud platform. Here also we have different roles. So if we actually have a look at these roles, administrator is actually the guy who can um, configure most of the things and uh, uh, 
uh, assign the users the required roles and so on. The designer role is actually mainly for the user who is designing these dashboards. The viewer role is for the users who are viewing the dashboards. They do not have any editing permission. They will just view the existing dashboards. They will just refresh and uh, have a look at those things. For ROI, it's a, it's a different uh, dashboard as we saw earlier. And for ROI, we have two different roles. Why we have it as two different roles is because to calculate the ROI, there are a few things that we need to configure. So we will be looking at it in a short while. So that kind of configuration has to be done by uh, this specific uh, role. So users who are in this specific role will be able to do that. It is not possible to change those values uh, by other users or even by the designer. So you need to have that permission because it's it's critical information. And uh, whoever wants to view the ROI dashboards, you can enable this uh, role for those users. So in my case, I have all all five roles for me. So that's how you enable or assign the users to each and every role you can also add users over here but just make sure that these users has to be there which has to be available in the cloud platform so you can type their username or email address and add them to the uh, insights okay so that's about manage access the other one here we can see configure ROI dashboards and configure custom variables. So we'll look at these things in a while. So let's have a look at the ROI data set. So to edit this information that you see over here, you need to have that ROI edit permission. So this information is actually based on user process or the queue. So you can see. Uh, if you select the queue, so in my case, I have four queues, and uh, this is the basic information. So, for this particular queue, for a transaction item, how much time you take if it is done manually, and what's the cost uh, to do a transaction manually? So, this kind of information you can edit here. And this information will be compared and used in the calculation to calculate the ROI uh, based on the queue or the process. So if we have a look at the use processes, here you can see these are few processes that I have in my this environment in the orchestrator. Um, and these are some figures that I have included, like for this particular uh, process. If it is done manually, it will take uh, 25 minutes and the hourly cost will be somewhere around 50. The currency, you can uh, use whatever you want. So likewise, you can actually configure just by editing the values over here uh, like this. Also, the nice thing here is this is what is given to us by default. If you want to add any additional ROI uh, stuff to include in the calculation, you can just click on add and uh, mention what's the new column. So for example, we can say FT is and uh, yeah. So once you add the column, it will appear over here and uh, the default value is always one, um, but you can configure it accordingly. So likewise, you can keep on adding the required uh, information that you need to include in your ROI uh, calculation. Okay, uh, yeah. So once you have configured this information, you can click on save to uh, save the changes. Yeah. 
so let's give it a couple of seconds okay cool and the other one here is configure custom variables so you can see here uh, configure custom variables for dashboards you can select maximum 200 variables so you can create any number of variables over here and this will be used uh, later in the dashboards so this is a separate topic so we will have a look at it later but in general you can have different uh, variables so these are provided by default and you have the data type string and number and once you enable you can select uh, what are the data types that you need to use so we'll have a look at this one um, maybe in a later video okay um, so that is mainly about the high level stuff that you can see from the dashboard and from the top menu so now we'll actually go into dashboard and see what are the uh, reports or the dashboards we have by default so we'll start with the processors so clicking on process it will go into the template and it will try to load the information so i don't have a lot of processors here so i have some processors uh yeah so you can see this is the processors dashboard uh, that's given to us by uipath and it automatically refresh itself to show the information so what we have here is the number of processes ran during the last 30 days and the average job duration, the success rate and uh, what are the processes, top 10 processes run during this period. If <coughs> something happened or something, if a process failed, that information will be available over here. So as you can see, as of now, it says uh, everything was successful actually both runs this is the filter so we can use this filter to actually filter out or include many more days like let's say uh, for this entire year up to now uh, let's select it and click on refresh from here to see how the data set looks like okay so here you can see the we have run 17 processors and out of that the success rate is 41 percent and here it says the top 10 processors uh, actually in blue color it's showing the faulted processors and in this color it says showing the successful so this process has actually failed all seven times and the same information is shown here which process has failed how many times so that we can easily see what process is causing a lot of trouble and uh, you can also see which user or the which robot has actually run it so in my case i have unattended and attended so you can see the different versions so an unattended version has actually triggered this uh, this process and the mostly is attended and the nice thing about this dashboard is actually here we are talking about faulted jobs and here it says <coughs> for each and every process uh, why it is failing and here you can see for this particular this scraper process has failed mostly due to this specific error and the number of times it has failed is six so this is the common error that it has identified so the good thing about this information is you can easily track what is the error that is causing a lot of trouble and you can uh, find try to find the root cause behind it so you might also wonder this information is given to you in the orchestrator itself and in the orchestrator also we have certain uh, measuring information like few dashboards um, so what's the difference between the insights and that in the orchestrator those dashboards you cannot customize 
it shows whatever it is uh, showing and uh, you cannot add or remove different things but in here uh, you can actually see a overall view of the entire uh, entire all the R uh, automation solutions you have in the orchestrator irrespective of different folders um, so it will give you a very high level idea what is actually going on and uh, so this kind of information you can easily capture here this is actually based on robot logs and the process information that's captured by the orchestrator uh, and the queue and so on so a lot of information is used here okay so over here you can also see we can also select different folders and uh, view the information according to each and every folder as well yeah so that's about the processes let's quickly go into queues i don't think i have much information regarding queues uh, let's quickly have a look um yeah yeah i don't think i have a lot of information but you get the idea here it says oh we have some info uh, for this year I have processed like 201 transactions in two queues and you can see the success rate 96 percent and uh, yeah so this information will also be helpful and it also shows uh, what's the queue and the uh, process uh, the data captured according to that and if any exceptions or exception was there those information can also be in, shown over here. Yeah, so this is the weekly exception breakdown. So you can see. You can actually click on it, and according to that, it will refresh the all the other fields as you see. So I clicked on this, and now it is showing on this particular instance what what actually happened in under exceptions. So this thing, it doesn't have any information here for some reason, but uh, let's click on this to see. Yeah, so it, you can actually try to drill down into those sections and see what's actually happening. And while doing that, you can also see different tags appear over here based on where I clicked. So I clicked on this uh, weekly exception breakdown. So that's what you see over here. And based on the other information that I clicked, all those information will be stored. So you can remove and it will automatically refresh the dashboard to show that information. As you see over here. Yep, so that's queues. So this feature is available for all the dashboards um, so I showed this one yeah under robots let's see I will just select this here so under robots we can also see the robot utilization the unattended how many hours a day and uh, for attended how many hours and the utilization um yeah so basically can also show the utilization for the current day this information is given to us by the orchestrator as well as the uh, robot itself yeah so this information is very useful when you are tracking the utilization of the robots the failed processors failed transactions to see and how to see how we can improve our automation and actually by looking at this kind of information you can also see if you are scaling uh, how you can use the existing robots and uh, to better utilize their time okay so uh and there are a lot of filters as well 
which we can easily create. So now we have actually uh, looked at these things and let's quickly have a look at the business ROI as well. This business ROI dashboard will be visible only for users that has the ROI viewer uh, user role. Yeah, so under business ROI, you can see uh, how much time saved, money saved, uh, total money saved for this year. And it will also break it down into processes, which process has saved money and uh, time saved uh, based on the process. Yeah, so this information is actually generated based on the uh, information we have given under config ROI dataset. Uh, that information is used to build these calculations. Yeah, okay, so that's about the, the dashboards we have by default. So, can you edit these dashboards? So, actually, once we get in here, you can you did not see any option to edit. Uh, only option we have here is to download, schedule, uh, clear, and refresh. But how to edit is actually you need to go here in in the UiPath templates and click on this copy to my dashboards. You cannot edit the existing thing. It, you need to create a copy of this and then edit it. So let's create a copy. Copy to my dashboards, which means it will create a copy in this uh, tab. And you can uh, give any name. So I will just say my processes, just for now. And it will create a copy and it will open up the this version okay so this is the same dashboard uh, that we saw earlier so we'll have a look at the few additional features that we have so in here on the top right hand side you have the refresh option and uh, you also have a feature to hide the filters so these are the filters that that is available you can hide it and uh, we also have dashboard actions so in here we see clear cache and refresh this will basically refresh the dashboard clearing whatever you have in the cache and uh, you have the edit we'll go there but first we'll have a look at some of these things and what happens when we click on download it will basically ask you how do we want to download this whether it's a pdf or a csv uh, so if we select pdf you can uh, set the page layout so i'll say fit page to dashboard uh, and let's enable these as well expand tables to show all the rows arrange dashboard tiles in a single column yep. we'll have a look how it looks like you can also see it in the browser in a different tab so this will not download it will just show the report in here let's see how how it is happening you can see it's generating the document preparing a document and uh, it should show something shortly yeah so based on our configuration in the in the download option this is how it is showing the dashboards. Yeah. So we'll also try to change this to include few more information and see how this looks like. And now we have some information here as well. Uh, let's see. You can save PDF and click on these options and in the browser. So it is running the queries. Let's give it a couple of seconds.
Yep. And here we have everything in one single page. From here, you can also download. If not, you can also download it directly from here without viewing in the browser. So I will just uh, keep the settings as it is and click on download. And it will do the same thing and it will download the file. Let's see how that works as well. Yep, so here we have the file and this is how that looks like. So it's based on how we configured it. So you can use this to present it anywhere to use in your presentation slides and so on. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's the download and also you can schedule a delivery. So you can basically email this as a PDF or as a CSV zip file or a image to uh, specified users at a given time, basically every day or weekly, monthly, anywhere you do that. And you can also do one now. Let's try it out. And about the filters, since we have two filters over here, you can actually define what filters you need for this scheduling and how how it needs to look like. And in advanced options, you can provide a custom message, expand tables to show all the rows, those same things that we saw earlier, uh, which time zone you are using, this information. So let's give it a custom message and see. Uh, yeah, so I will do send now to my email address and let's see how this looks like. And let me go to my email. And we should see something shortly. Yep, so we see inside cloud. And this is the custom message. And uh, this email was scheduled by you. And we see the same PDF file. Cool, so that's about the scheduling. So likewise, you can actually schedule your reports uh, to send it to different users. Uh, at given time so that they can keep track of uh, how your processors and your automation is uh, doing yep. <clears throat> and also in this same report you can also trigger alerts here in in e each and every tile you can see a small bell icon which you can use to trigger alerts so for example as of now, my success rate is 41%. So as an, as things get executed, if the success level uh, drops below 40%, for example, I can click on this thing and uh, create an alert saying if the success rate is less than uh, 40%, then I can send out an email for, for the specified user and these things can also be scheduled uh, and how you want to schedule it at what time and uh, save the alert. Here also you have a different option to define the filters. So you can see here we don't have an edit option but it is actually taking the value over here. So if you want to trigger an alert uh, where the success rate is uh, less than 40 for, uh, for this particular week, then, you, then what you need to do is you need to go here, uh, select the last seven days and trigger the alert. 
uh, less than 40 and if you go into filters you can see uh, oops I did not refresh <clears throat> so I don't have anything for the last seven days if I remember correct um, yeah so I will just show you how it is done and say less than 40 and in filters you can see in the last seven days and once you click on done it will create uh, the alert for this particular value over here yeah so that's how you trigger the alerts and your schedule for these dashboards so that users always do not need to come here uh, they will automatically get the alerts they will get the report to their email itself and uh, they can view what's going on from there all right so we talked about alerts and uh, what else yeah so the next items are actually to see how we can create this kind of dashboard so we'll look at how we create these dashboards and uh, how we can create custom uh, custom fields, custom calculations by writing different formulas um, in the next video. I don't want to um, do a very lengthy video with this. Uh, it might be boring <laughs> if I do like that. So. Let's break it and uh, this is more like the introduction of uh, insights and its capabilities and what features we have, what we can do and so on. So in another video, we'll actually see uh, what are the fields we have here and what, how we can use this drag and drop interface to create our dashboards to look like this. All right, so I think this is the end of the first uh, UiPath Insights video. So thank you very much for listening and I will see you in another video that actually describes how we are going to create these dashboards and how easy it is. So thank you very much again. Stay safe. I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.